Well, good morning. You're wondering who is this guy? I uh, want to introduce myself. My name's uh, David Decker. I'm a pastor at Lighthouse Community Church, way on the other side of town, and um, also a, a principal at a small Christian school down on the outskirts of Waynesburg called Open Door Christian School. And I am sincerely thrilled and very thankful to be with you here this morning. I just pray that God's will is done. Uh, but I want you to know something. If you have any concerns, complaints, issues, it was Steve Longstreth that contacted me, okay? And if, if, if you know, and on the good, on the other side of that, if, if things are good, well, that's just glory to God. But uh, would you take a moment, would you please bow with me, and we just ask God's blessing on our time this morning. Precious Heavenly Father, how I thank you and praise you to have the opportunity to share your word, your precious, precious word. I pray that we would not take it lightly, that we would lean in and, and receive what you have for us today, that we would be expectant for, for what you have for us today, Lord, that we would not be uh, sitting here just waiting for the time to pass, but we would be sitting here growing closer to you, being changed by you, being challenged by you. I just ask that you would open our hearts. Let your will be done in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. I truly do thank you for the opportunity. Sharing your pulpit, uh, especially with someone you don't know, um, I, I just want you to know that it's not something I take lightly, and I do pray that, uh, you know, God is glorified, his word is shared this morning. And uh, uh, I walked up here, I have, I have my, my tablet here, and usually I get one of two different reactions when they see a pastor carrying, you know, the, their electronic device to, to preach from is, one, it's, oh, he's just hip. He thinks, you know, he's cool. He's got, yeah. and the other is, well, this is not a man of God. You know, he's not using an actual Bible. And I, I just want to let you know, I'm going to disappoint both of you because the only reason I use this is because I can make the font bigger. Okay, and as I get older, the font keeps needing to get bigger and bigger. And um, so that's, that's just why I use that. Uh, I'll be uh, reading from John chapter 18, if, you wanna, if you'd like to turn there um, this morning. Be reading from the, the Christian Standard Bible. And I just, I, I just want to say, uh, you know, for some, not, not everybody, not may, probably not even many, but uh, for some, uh, they, they really get... Uh, uh, defensive, if I could say, about the translation of the Bible, or if you're using an actual Bible or an electronic device. Uh, what I just want to share with you this morning is get into God's Word, okay? I don't want, I, I don't want to debate with you about the translation. I don't want to debate with you if you're using your phone, a tablet, a computer, a, an actual Bible. I just want to encourage you, challenge you even, get into God's Word. Read God's Word. Allow His Word to penetrate your heart and your life. And the title of the message this morning is Stick to the Plan. Stick to the Plan. And if you are my age, maybe a little more, a little less, uh, I, I, I'm... I'm, I, I'm you know, 40, and, and um, I have a, a beautiful wife, uh, and uh, three, of course I'm biased, but beautiful wife, three amazing kids. Now, they're at our home church this morning, um, serving there, and, and uh, I miss them, but I, I'm so thankful to be with you this morning. But if, you, if you're around my age, I'm, I'm this is sad. I think I'm 47. I think. I'm, and I'm not going to try to do the math real quick here. I'm 47. And, and, uh, but one of the shows I grew up on 
I, I mean, we could watch TV back in the day. You only had three choices, but you weren't as worried of what was going to be on. Uh, but one of the shows I grew up on was The A-Team. Anybody ever watch The A-Team or at least know what I'm talking about here? A few of you. Okay. All right. Well, at the end of that show, every time, the, their leader, Hannibal Smith, would light his cigar and say, I love it when a plan comes together. Okay, because things always worked out in the end of that show, and that was one of the reasons I loved it. And uh, I want to I wanna tell you, when it comes to following Jesus Christ, it will work out in the end. Okay, I've cheated. I've already gone to the end of the book, the end of the story. God wins. Okay, God wins. And what I want to encourage you with today is to stick to the plan. And let's see what that plan is. Uh, beginning in verse 15 of John, uh, did I say John 18? I apologize, John 21. I'll, I'll jump back to John 18 in a moment, but we're not there yet. John 21, beginning in verse 15. I'm so sorry about that. But, but it starts off, when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said to him, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs, he told him. A second time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, he said to him, you know that I love you. Shepherd my sheep, he told him. He asked him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved that he asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep, Jesus said. Truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you would tie your belt and walk wherever you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will tie you and carry you where you don't want to go. He said this to indicate by what kind of death Peter would glorify God. After saying this, he told him, follow me. Now, you may or may not have realized that throughout the Gospels, we are dealing with two different kinds of disciples. There are the pre-resurrection disciples, the disciples who spent approximately three years ministering uh, with Jesus, learning from Jesus, spending time with Jesus, walking this earth with Jesus. And then there are the disciples that are the post-resurrection disciples. Now, these disciples have the same names. They have the same message. They even have the same plan. But they're different disciples. You see, because the disciples before Jesus was resurrected, they all started with a couple words, and that's, you don't have to turn there, but I'm going to jump back to John chapter 18, and it says in verses 26 and 27, it says, one of the high priest's servants, a relative, that's not what I want. Man, I'm off it today. John chapter 1. In John chapter, you guys, you you're, you're already want to talk to Steve, don't you? <laughs> In John chapter 1, Jesus starts his ministry to, with his disciples by telling his disciples, follow me. Follow me. And that was the beginning of the plan. Follow me. And believe it or not, that is still our plan today, that Jesus is telling each of us, you and me, 
He's speaking to us and saying, follow me. Don't follow the politicians. Don't follow your bank account. Don't follow your friend. And my goodness gracious, do not follow your heart. Heart gets you in trouble. Don't go by your feelings. It's not about your feelings. It's about following Jesus and allowing your will to be his will for your life. Because in reading scripture, one thing I know is that his will is better than my will. His will is better than my will. His way is better than my way. Scripture tells us that. He knows me better than I know myself. He knows what is better for me better than I know. And he knows that for you also. Now, if you are sitting here, and maybe this is your first time here today, and you're like, oh my goodness, did we pick a bad day to visit this church, this beautiful building. I must say, the few times I've been here over the years, I've always just just loved this sanctuary and such a beautiful building. I've been here a few times over the years. I I, I used to help with, uh, with my, my brain is not on today. I didn't have enough caffeine this morning. Um, well, anyway, it was a good story. <laughs> it was a good story. But I've, I've, I've been in here a few times, and I've always just loved this, this beautiful sanctuary. And, uh, but from the beginning... Jesus started off his plan with his disciples by simply saying, follow me. And, when, and, and, and you're wondering, what is he talking about? The pre-resurrection disciples, the post-resurrection disciples. When I read through the scripture, it's, it's the same people. But see, the pre-resurrection disciples had a lot of issues. Just like you and I do today. We have a lot of issues. Okay, a lot of problems, a lot of concerns, a lot of, a lot of things weighing us down. Even, dare I say, a lot of confusion. And if you're sitting there and you're saying, well, I'm not confused, that's good. Don't turn on the TV. Don't listen to the news because that will confuse you. That message is not a message of hope, a message of joy. That message is a message of despair and a message of just giving up. The message in Scripture is a message of unity and a message of hope and a message of joy. And that's the message that Jesus shared. Release time Bible. That's it. Just came back to me. I I, I used to work with uh, Release Time Bible, and they would meet downstairs. You know, we'd go over to the elementary school here, and we'd pick them up and bring them over. And I'm I'm sorry, you, but you're stuck with me for a few more minutes here. Just remember, Steve Longstreth, okay? Okay, but Jesus, he again, he said, "Follow me. Follow me," and that is the plan. And these disciples, before the resurrection of Jesus, they believed they were following him. They were spending all their time with him. They were doing what he instructed them to do. But when it came down to the last minute, when it came down to crunch time, when it came down to Jesus being nailed upon a cross, what happened to those disciples? And that's, that's where I was going in John 18 here this morning. Verses 26 and 27, it says, One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Peter denied it again. Immediately, a rooster crowed. Now, Of course, you need to read more to get the whole context here, but I'm sure many of you know exactly what just happened. Because when it says Peter denied it again, how many times before this did Peter deny knowing Jesus or being his disciple? Two times before this, and then this was the third time. 
And Peter was the guy. We give Peter a lot, of, a, a, a lot of slack for being the guy who jumps out of the boat and being the guy who, who, who tries to walk on water, which he did for a moment and took, until he took his eyes off Jesus. And, and Peter, he, he always, Peter's the kind of guy that uh, uh, he'd be the uh, shoot, aim kind of guy, okay? He, he would just do it and then figure out, well, is, is that what I should have done? Okay, and Peter gets a bad rap for that, but really, I think some of us, a lot of us, need a little bit more Peter in us when it comes to that. But you see, Peter, the one who told Jesus, "Hey, I don't know about the rest of these these jokers, the other disciples, but I will never leave you, Jesus." And Jesus tells him, "No, Peter, actually." You're going to deny that you even known, have known me. You're going to deny it three times. And it starts off with a young girl asking Peter, Aren't you, didn't I, were you, do you know him? And Jesus says, No. So even, even when, a, when, a, when a young girl challenged Peter, and he ended up denying that he knew Jesus Christ three times. And at that moment, I can only imagine being Peter. I think saying a broken heart doesn't cover it at that time. I, can, I, can, I try to put myself in Peter's shoes and denying Jesus that third time and that rooster crowing. And maybe, maybe Peter even looked over and saw the, the bloody face of his Savior off in the distance there. And it says that Peter, we, we know in the other, uh, other Gospels that Peter, he just ran. He took off. And all of the disciples at this time dispersed. Dispersed. You see, they knew Jesus. And if you ask most Americans today, if you're a Christian, most of them would say yes. And the disciples would say, hey, we were disciples of Jesus. But when it really came down to it, they all ran their separate ways. And I believe in our country today, we have the problems we have because we as followers of Jesus Christ, when it really comes down to the tough times, we like to hide. We like to sit in the corner and say, please don't hurt me today, Satan. Please don't hurt me today. You see, we're not sticking to the plan that started with the simple words of follow me. But when we follow Jesus and we follow his story and we follow his words, we see that greater is he that is in you and I than the one that's in this world. We have exactly what we need to make the devil run. We have everything we need to make the devil run. I mean, when you, when, you, when you read through Scripture and Scripture tells you, resist the devil and he will flee. Resist the devil and he will flee. Now, we don't resist the devil so much anymore, and, and, and I'm painting with a broad stroke here in our culture today. We don't resist the devil so much anymore. We go with our feelings. We go with what's easy. We go with what gives the, the least amount of friction. Instead of standing on the Word of God, the foundation of Jesus Christ, and being the men and women of God we are called to be. And it all starts with 
follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. And that's how the plan started. And that's how it still is today for you and I. Follow Jesus. Now, I'm not going to ask anyone to raise your hand or say anything or do anything, but I want you, of course, to be honest with yourself. And you're in church. The pressure's on to be honest with yourself. And, of course, Jesus knows. The Lord knows. But when was the last time outside of this building did you open your Bible and read it? When was the last time you spent time alone with the Lord? When was the last time you read the Gospels? You read through Scripture. When was the last time? And I know, I'm sure, for many, you're saying, well, it was this morning. It was just, I read my Bible every day. In fact, you need to catch up with me, is, is what some may be saying. And, and I guarantee you're right for many of you. But I think for culture and our church today, again, broad stroke, big church, we don't rely on the power that has been given to us. We don't spend time in God's Word. We don't spend time on our knees. We don't spend time following Jesus. You see, a few generations ago, the Bible was taught in the homes of most Americans. And then that family would go to church as a family. They would go to church. And the church, through fellowship, through teaching, through reading, through singing, was affirming what was being taught in the home. And then you jump to the next generation or a couple generations down. And the Bible wasn't taught so much at home anymore. But the family still went to church. And the family said, Pastor, teach my kids. Pastor, feed me. Pastor, give me God's Word. And then we jumped a couple generations down again. And the parents drop their kids off at church because they want their kids to be good. So they bring them to church, but they drop them off. And it's definitely not taught at home. And then now we're in a situation where the family, obviously I'm preaching to the choir here, but we're in a situation where the family doesn't go to church. And God's Word is not taught in the homes. And then we sit here and say, why is our country the way our country is? Why is our world the way it is? It just happened overnight. Everything just got turned upside down overnight. No, not so much overnight. We didn't stick to the plan. We haven't stuck to the plan. And let's, let's go back to the verses we read, we started with this morning, John 21, beginning in verse 15. Because remember, this is post-resurrection. Okay? These are, we're, we're beginning to deal with different disciples here. Same names, same, same men, but things are different now. And when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? 
more than these. Now you notice in this verse here, Jesus, he gave Peter the name Peter. And it's a beautiful history, the, the, the Greek behind it, the Aramaic behind it. Uh, but he gave Peter the name Peter. He, he said, Simon, you are going to be Peter. But Jesus, even though he gave him the name Peter, goes back to his original name here and says, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Some theologians say that Jesus, when he said this, do you love me more than these? He was pointing at the fish there that they were having for breakfast. He was pointing basically saying, do you love me more than your job? Because remember, what happened was Jesus was crucified. The disciples didn't know what to do. They went back to what they knew. They, many were fishermen. They went back to being fishermen. Read the entire chapter. Get the whole context here. So some theologians say that Jesus pointed, you know, to the breakfast. Say, do you love me more than these, these, these fish, your, your job? Some theologians say, he was saying, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Pointing to the other disciples, saying, do you love me more than you love them? And there are probably some other things theologians say, including some that say, when he says, Simon, do you love me more than these? Saying, do you love me more than these disciples love me? And what I don't want you to get caught up on is, was Jesus saying this, this, or this? What we need to focus on is, Simon, do you love me more? Because I don't really care what Jesus was truly talking about and, and where, what theologians you would fall behind in, in studying that. I want to focus on Jesus saying, Simon, do you love me more? Do you love me more than, and you can fill in the blank with anything you want. Do you love me more than your job? Do you love me more than your friends and your family? Do you love me more than what this world can give you? Do you love me more? Because when Simon, Peter, says, of course, Lord, I love you more, then we can get somewhere. And that's exactly what he says. Yes, Lord, he said to him, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs, he told him. Feed my lambs. A second time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Shepherd my sheep, he told him. And he asked them a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now Peter was grieved, it says, that he was asked a third time. And I can understand that. When my wife asked me three times to do something, and I told her the first time I would do it, just because it, it's been six months doesn't mean I'm not going to do it. Sweetie, I'm going to keep my word. I will do it. Why do you have to keep asking me to do it? So I can understand where Peter's coming from here when it, when it says that he was, he was grieved. And 
And Peter, the third time, he answers, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep, Jesus said. Now see, what we talked about a few moments ago with the pre-resurrection Peter was that he denied Jesus three times. And then we get to the post-resurrection Peter and Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? Jesus is reinstating Peter here and making sure Peter understands, do you really understand what's going on here? Because if you love me, you have a job to do. That's part of the plan, abundant life. If you love him, you have a job to do. Well, I just like to come to church and be fed and enjoy the music, which I do thank you for the beautiful uh, worship here this morning. Uh, I just I love singing praises to my Lord. But so many of us, we're, we're in a consumer-driven culture. And then we come to church with that same attitude. Well, what do you have for me today? What are you going to do for me today? How are you going to entertain me today? What are you going to give me? But that's not how Jesus approached it when he was talking to Peter. He says, you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Well, then you have a job to do. Peter, are you, do you, are you sure you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Well, then you have a job to do. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know everything. Of course you know that I love you. Well, then Peter, you have a job to do. And Peter does that job. And you read through the book of Acts, you see Peter doing that, living out. And we see a different Peter, a Peter that denied knowing Jesus when, when face-to-face with the little girl and, and denied him three times and then ran away. That Peter's not around anymore. Because we see a Peter among the other disciples who when they are faced, not by children, but by church leaders, government leaders, by mobs, when they're face to face with these and they tell them, hey, you can't preach the word of God. You can't do this. You can't do that. You have to deny Jesus. There was no way those disciples were doing that. And they said, hey, you do what you got to do, but if you're telling me I have to choose between making you happy and making God happy, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but I'm going to make God happy. I'm serving God. I'm pleasing God. I'm working for God. If you don't like it, you can throw me in jail because that means I'm going to preach and serve my God. I'm just going to do it in jail. Paul was so excited. I don't get this. I've never been in jail. Praise God. I'm sure you're happy to hear that this morning. Uh, you know, I, I, I've never been locked up. But, but, but you look at Paul's life, and he was, ex- oh, you're going to chain me up to somebody? You're going to put me in a prison? Oh, this is great. Fresh meat. I get to tell him all about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Man, I want that attitude in my life when I'm going through those bad days and just and I'm going through the good days and either way I want to stick to the plan I want to be doing the work that Jesus Christ has called me to do and I want to be sharing the truth everywhere I go and my every action my every word may it glorify God in fact if somebody who doesn't love Jesus, isn't a little upset with me, I don't think I'm doing my job. 
If I'm not upsetting Satan, if I'm not upsetting the world, I'm not living the life that Christ wants me to live. And that's where we are today. We sit in the corner. I don't want to upset anyone. I don't want to cause a stir. I don't want... Look at the church, the beginnings of the church in the book of Acts. You look at the church when it started, and you look at our church today. Unfortunately, I don't see a lot of similarities. A lot of similarities in how the church started, the church that Jesus Christ started through his disciples, and then the church that we have today. I don't see enough similarities. We need to stick to the plan. Now let's continue in our scripture this morning here. Feed my sheep, Jesus said. Truly I tell you, when you were younger, you would tie your belt and walk wherever you wanted. Isn't that awesome to just do whatever you want? Don't you, don't you remember being at that age where you couldn't wait to get your license? And some of you may be in that area right now, but you couldn't wait because, oh, man, freedom. Freedom. I can drive. I had nowhere to drive, but, man, when I could, there was freedom. We, I, I went where, if I wanted to go to 7-Eleven and get a big gulp, I drove to 7-Eleven and got a big gulp. When I wanted to, you, you, you know, I just, I did what I wanted. And, and Jesus says, remember those times. Remember where you, you dressed how you wanted, you did what you wanted, you went where you want. Jesus is telling Peter, that's, that's going to change. He says, but when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will tie you and carry you where you don't want to go. He said this to indicate by what kind of death Peter would glorify God. You see, church tradition tells us this is, this is not in Scripture, so I cannot back this up with Scripture. But I believe it to be, I believe it's very, very possible from, from church tradition, church history, that when it says here that Jesus, he's actually telling Peter the way he's going to die. He's going to have his arms stretched out. He's going to be crucified. And church history tells us that Peter was crucified. In fact, all of the disciples, the disciples that ran when there was trouble and hid when there was trouble, all of them, save one, John, died a martyr's death. You see, these post-resurrection disciples aren't the same people. When they saw what happened, they experienced it. And we, though we didn't stand there on those days, we can have the same experience in our lives, in our hearts, when we just turn everything over to Jesus Christ because they weren't the same anymore. Everything that Jesus taught them, the whole plan that Jesus gave them, starting with, hey, follow me, it all, just like Hannibal Smith at the end of the A-team, it all came together. And the disciples knew, hey, this Jesus, he said he was going to die. He died. He said he was going to be crucified. When the Bible first tells us 
that the Son of God is going to be crucified, going to be hung on a tree. It was hundreds of years before crucifixion was even invented. What a cute coincidence, isn't it? Now, of course, I'm joking there. That is no coincidence. That's just one of the, don't tell me the, the Bible is just a story when you, when you come across facts like that. The disciples, they said, when Jesus said he was going to die, when he was going to be crucified, when he was going to be buried, and he was going to be raised on the third day, the disciples heard Jesus say all this. They didn't understand all of it. They saw it happen, and they said, this is the real deal. And they love Jesus. And they got to work serving Jesus. And we see through the book of Acts, they weren't messing around, even in the difficult times. And church tradition tells us that Peter, and this is where I believe this is very possible, that Peter did not consider himself worthy to die the same death, the same way that his Savior died. So he asked, and, a, and, a, and we believe it was granted to be crucified upside down because he wasn't even worthy to die the same death of his Savior. And after Jesus told him what kind of death would come upon Peter to glorify God. Don't miss that part. After saying all this, Jesus said, follow me. So one of the very first words Jesus said on this earth to his disciples was follow me. And some of the very last words Jesus said before he rose into heaven, ascended into heaven, some of the very last words were follow me. Do you think Jesus wants us to follow him? Do you think we should stick to the plan? I sure do. I sure do. You stick to the plan. I don't know what the plan is. I don't know what Jesus wants from my life. I don't know exactly what he wants me to do. I don't know. 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 Well, welcome to the club because I certainly don't have all the answers. I have a lot of I don't knows in my life. But what I do know is I love Jesus. And because I love Jesus, I am going to follow him. Why do you love Jesus? Why do I love Jesus? Well, it boils down to what Scripture says, because Jesus first loved me. He knows everything about me. He knows and he knew when he was put on that cross all my I don't knows, all my shortcomings, every one of my horrible sins that I would never share in front of you, all of my skeletons in the closet, all of my doubts, my issues, my concerns. He knows them all. And he still doesn't, did not hesitate to carry them to that cross for me so that his blood could wash me clean. His blood could pay my debt, a debt that there is no way in millions and millions and millions of years could I ever repay. Because I'm sick and tired of being good. I don't want to be good anymore. The world's full of good people. We don't need good people. We need godly people. 
So my challenge for each of us here today, Abundant Life, and I again, I thank you for allowing me to share God's word with you. My challenge for each of us is let's stick to the plan. And if you don't know where to start, you just jump into God's word. Read through the Gospels. Learn the plan. Because Jesus is with you every step of the way. Stick to the plan. Will you please bow your heads with me? Precious Heavenly Father, you are a good, good, mighty God. As we just celebrated Father's Day, I can say, man, am I blessed with a wonderful earthly father, but my heavenly father, you are the one I want to celebrate day in and day out. You are the one I want to glorify. You are the one that laid a plan out for each and every one of us, even before the earth was formed. You laid out a plan for us. And I know there are times we struggle with it. I know there are times we don't understand it. But I know I want to stick to the plan. I want to stick to your plan for me. I pray that each of us here would stick to your plan. I don't want to complain about what's going on in the world. I want to change the world. But it's not I. It's he who lives in me. I want to share Jesus, and that will change the world. Heavenly Father, I pray for abundant life. I pray that you would bless this, this extremely kind, loving congregation. And though I love the beauty of this building, this building is not the church. It's the people here that are the church, your church, your bride the body of Christ. I pray that you would guide them, strengthen them, encourage them, love them, and you would help them as well as me, Lord, to stick to the plan. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. God bless you.